I think I've played just about every Call of Duty they've ever released since the first one in 2003, and while most of them have their place as my favourite storylines or setting in the series, I always find myself coming back to one game in particular. World at War was released in 2008, following on from a quick dip into Modern Warfare in 2007. It was once again another World War II shooter, much like the previous games, but this one felt different. World at War wasn't the first World War II entry in Call of Duty I played. I played heaps of Call of Duty 2 and 3, but World at War stuck in my head as something almost exclusive from the others. It felt raw, chaotic, and real. It had compelling characters, exciting and almost terrifying gunplay, vehicle combat, and truly captivating story elements. But what makes this the best World War II entry in Call of Duty's history? Let's find out. From the instant you boot up the game, you could tell that World at War was going to be different. It presents you with this eerie dark menu screen with its chilling soundtrack in the background. It's already haunting and different from the expected glorious fanfares of previous World War II games I had played at that point. A direct comparison I like to make is the difference between Medal of Honor Rising Sun's menu screen to World at Wars. Completely different feeling altogether, even though half this campaign is the Pacific Theatre like in Medal of Honor. Even when compared to the first Call of Duty's menu screen, where it's more reminiscent of the Saving Private Ryan score, it's vastly different. Even when you launch yourself into the story, the intermission cutscenes also remind you of this dark tone they took with the game. Robux gravelly, low voice interspliced with the real footage from the war really sets the tone. And then the first instance of gameplay you get is you and your squad captured by the Japanese where you get this infamous moment. Go to hell. Yeah, you could tell this was going to be something else. Throughout the first mission, you're starkly reminded of how much more brutal this is going to be. Limbs flying off your enemies, corpses burning, the screams of your foes. This game isn't just about World War II. It's going to try and show you the raw, visceral realities of this war. Unflinching reminders of what it was like. It wasn't heroic a lot of the time. It was blood, sweat, and tears, and it was gritty. The gameplay had you cowering at points, bullets flying all around you, explosions next to your head, all the while you've got to push up to the next objective while trying to kill the enemy just in front of you. Most of the weapons you had available to you were also decently accurate for how they operate. Oftentimes you'll find yourself fighting a horde of Japanese with a scavenged Arasaka bolt-action rifle with the panic setting in as they Banzai charge you. But then you get moments where you operate a Browning machine gun and you get to tear through the enemy. And all the while, I've only talked about one half of the campaign, which in my opinion is the tamer half. Let's talk Soviets. The Soviet half of the campaign is glorious at times and horribly brutal a lot of the times. The Soviet campaign starts with basically a giant reference to enemy at the gates. You awake in a fountain, surrounded by corpses, and the Wehrmacht walking past you, shooting any survivors, with the eerie soundtrack slowly coming into play. You meet Sergeant Reznov among the corpses, who teaches you the basics for sniping, where you unleash terror among the occupying German forces. It's during this mission where the seed of vengeance is planted, and the entire Soviet campaign revolves around that vengeance and the desire to destroy Germany for what they had done in Stalingrad and throughout the Soviet Union. This mission takes place in 1942, and when we next rejoin the Soviet forces, we're flung right to 1945, where the Soviet forces have pushed back the German onslaught right to the heart of Germany. Again, the accompanying intermission cutscenes showing you real footage from the war with unflinching regard to the horrors on show. The brutality from the Soviet forces slowly ramps up the deeper you get into Germany, starting with burning the German forces with Molotovs in the wheat fields, 
to shooting surrendering soldiers on the streets of Berlin. All of this accompanied with the brilliant soundtrack and the shouts of Ura from the Soviet forces. The very culmination of the horror and brutality are the missions that take place in the heart of Berlin. Eviction. Heart of the Reich. Downfall. All of them upping their depictions of the desperate fighting in and around Berlin during the fall of the Nazi regime. All of it coalescing into one of the best ending sequences for a Call of Duty game ever. You always survive. The honor should be yours. As long as you live, the heart of this army can never be broken. Things will change, my friend. As heroes, we will return to Russia's embrace. That's an ending that gives you the glory of triumph over the Nazi regime, combined with the very real history that took place, while also trying to inform the player of the solemn truth about the story they've witnessed. Even when we look away from the campaign, once you'd completed it, World at War once again introduced another fantastic addition to the series in an equally terrifying way. Zombies mode wasn't anything that outrageously new or complex, but it offered players a reward for playing the campaign and heaps of replayability with friends. If zombies mode was a thing coming out now, it would have been a paid for expansion to access it at all. But the original maps from this entry and the gameplay was so much fun that Zombies alone puts this game high up on my list. I genuinely can't beat the original maps. Black Ops came close, but Nakda and Toten, Verrucht, Shinonuma and Derice are the best hands down. Multiplayer again, while it wasn't a particular highlight in this entry, was still pretty good. It's just a damn shame the servers for this game are gone, and if you did play it today on private servers, you can say goodbye to your PC and all your personal details, as you'll get hacked quicker than you can load the map. But back in the day, I did have some great fun playing just the standard multiplayer from time to time. However, truthfully, more of my effort was spent on zombies. World at War to me was a game that didn't try and mask the horrors of war. And I'm not saying that previous titles did mask it either, but I think at the time it was released, there was the technology and mechanics that could be used to try and display the very real nature of warfare, in particular the bloodiest war humanity has ever witnessed. Its campaign isn't afraid to showcase the atrocities committed on all sides of the war, and it also showed a very real feeling of horror that you would expect from this conflict. And I think they took this understanding of warfare and began to pivot with it so that future installments of Call of Duty weren't just glorifications of warfare and combat, but it also tried to show the very real nature of it. I mean, the next two games are again two of my favourites. Modern Warfare 2, which made the invasion scenes of the east coast of the US feel genuinely terrifying, and then Black Ops, while a little more movie inspired, also tried to showcase some of the brutal nature of combat alongside things like PTSD, the demonic behaviour of the CIA and all sorts of manners that happened during the Cold War. When you compare it to the latest World War II entries of Call of Duty, it beats them all with the exception of graphics quality, but even then that doesn't really matter. Call of Duty World War II was alright, but it changed too much and was the beginning of yet another pivot for less historically accurate depictions. And Call of Duty Vanguard? Well, that game and its campaign are just a dumpster fire, and honestly it's painful to play through it at some points because of such glaring issues I had, not only with its story but its gameplay too. You don't have to add nonsense attachments, weapons and skins to your game to make it entertaining. It just makes the game feel like a slap in the face to the sadly dwindling population that remembers the war you're trying to depict. 
World at War will probably always remain at the top of my favourite Call of Duties because of its brilliance in storytelling, the brutality, and the appreciation of the very real history it's trying to represent. But I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this. Do you think World at War is deserving of a top spot? If not, what Call of Duty would you put ahead of this one? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, please consider subscribing, it really helps me out. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.